Hey guys, Mr. Kreider here. Um, exploratory, we're going to continue with this story of Jason and the Golden Fleece. And in fact, actually we meet Jason today, so that's going to be fun. Uh, before we haven't met him officially, we just saw that in the preview uh, that somebody else made in the YouTube video uh, last week or two weeks ago. Anyhow, uh, two things I want to go over with you. One, make sure you're doing the assignments. Uh, put that question in. Doesn't have to be anything uh, too tricky. Just you know, make it a simple question. What are you curious about, or what don't you understand? And I will try and answer those questions, or at least respond accordingly, telling you that hey, that's a good question to think about. Well, next thing is the drawings. Uh, we're gonna do the drawing again this year or this this week. Uh, make sure that you're putting that up there. Color would be great, especially on these you know kind of gray blah days that we're gonna have this week. Uh, let's add some color to our lives. And those of you that did the photos, those were awesome. They were so cool. So if you can get your family to participate in that, do it. Make sure it has to do with this story that I'm going to read to you right now. Long after Phrixus had died, there lived in a certain country a king and queen who had, one, had but one child, a boy named Jason. The king, whose name was Eason, was a good-natured man, but rather weak king. He could not defend this kingdom, and after a while, his own brother, Jason's uncle, came to Eason's kingdom with a large army, and he drove King Eason and his family out of the land and seized the throne for himself. Thereafter, Eason was forced to live far away, in poverty, without friends. There's a lot of poverty in these stories, huh? Eason always wanted the very best for his son. However, and so... He sent his boy, Jason, away to be educated by Chiron, who was thought to be the wisest person in the world. Chiron might be called only half a person, <laughs> for Chiron was a centaur. A centaur, uh, ha centaurs have heads and arms like those of men, but their bodies and legs were like those of horses, kind of like that guy in um, Onward. You guys see that yet on Disney Plus? Um, although centaurs were, for the most part, savage and monstrous creatures, Chiron was a much different sort altogether. He was a scholar and was famed for knowing more about everything than anyone in all of Greece. He knew all about the stars. He knew about which plants could cure diseases. He was a great archer. Uh, he could play the lyre. Ding, 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 ding. Um, and sing songs and tell stories better than any human in all the land. Certainly better than me. And that is why many kings sent their sons to him to be educated. So, little Jason went to the centaur's cave on the mountaintop, and he spent his youth there hunting and fishing and learning how to use a sword and a spear, and what was better still, to be truthful and kind. Sounds like points of pride, huh? But at last, Jason grew to be a man, and then Chiron told him that his father, Eason, was not just a friendless pauper, but he had once been a king. He explained to Jason how Eason's, son, how Eason's throne had been taken away from him, and he told the boy that his duty now lay in reclaiming the kingdom that was rightfully his father's own. When the time for parting came, Chiron went with Jason to the foot of the mountain and said, Forget not the lessons I have taught you. I always, oh, you should always speak the truth and act the truth and be kind to all who need your help. Hmm. So Jason started on his journey. When he had gone by some distance, he came to a stream that had been flooded by the spring rains. On the bank, there stood an old woman looking for some way across. Mindful of what the centaur said, Jason spoke to her and offered to carry her across the swollen stream. That was nice. The old woman gladly accepted the offer, and Jason lifted her upon his shoulders and entered the rushing river. The water dashed against him with great force. He had to struggle with all his might, and he was out of breath when he landed his companion safely on the other shore. But you can imagine Jason's surprise to see not the old woman he had carried across, but the stately form of the goddess Juno, a.k.a. Hera in Greek myth queen of all the immortals, standing before him. Young man, she said, you have a good and brave heart, and you shall not regret your kindness to an old woman. And in the next instant, she vanished. When Jason recovered from his surprise and started to go on his way, he saw to his dismay 
that one of his sandals had been lost in the rushing water. And so he had to walk the rest of the way with only one shoe. He came to, at last, the palace of his father's brother, whose name was Peleus. And he was taken straight away to see the king. The king turned pale with fear at the sight of Jason, for an oracle had foretold that his kingdom would be taken from him by a youth wearing only one sandal, and one of Jason's feet, as you know, was bare. That's all for right now. We'll continue the story on Wednesday. Coronavirus to lend us est. <laughs>